and it is officially time to go. So welcome guys, welcome to London. We are live from London. It is Sunday the 19th of uh, August 2023 uh, and it is 7.30 uh, p.m. UK time. I've started to say that at the beginning of my tours because I know that sometimes people watch it on replay and they're not too sure if it's live or if it's replay. So if it's not the right time or the right day, it is then replay. Anyway, let's, uh, let's flip this camera around. So we are by the Tower Bridge, but today we're not here to talk about the bridge. We are here to talk about Mary Jane Kelly or Marie Jeannette, as she liked to be called. And uh, we're not going to focus too much on her tragic death. I'm here to tell you about her life or whatever we know of her life, which to be honest, with Mary Jane, it is not much. But I just wanted to start with a lovely view. Uh, Mary Jeannette would not have seen the, uh, the, the Tower Bridge because simply it did not exist quite yet. The, the bridge is um, 1894. Uh, so it wouldn't have been there at the time of, um, of Mary Kelly. Good, I think they've turned the music off for a sec, so let's go straight through I Rosemary. And um, um, so I wanted to say, oh, the music is quite loud here. L let me mute you one minute, one minute, okay? I should be a little bit further away from the speakers now, so the, you shouldn't be able to hear the music. Um, before we go anywhere else, let me show you this little gem here. It's known as the Dead Man's Hole. This was, would you believe, a mortuary. Uh, so that's, uh, that was uh, where the Victorians would take the dead. Anyone that was found dead on the river, you know the, um, the Thames River is tidal, it goes up and down following the sea levels and um, apparently in that very spot they were often finding some bodies sadly floating down the river. Um, on average there was one body a week, still today, one body a week found, uh, found uh, in the Thames. So that's where they used to keep the, the, the bodies until they could be identified. And that's why you might have noticed it was white tiles on the, on the, 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 the ceiling on the, uh, on the walls. Apparently it is because those bloated bodies, they used to sometimes um, explode. Um, so that was easier to wash the walls on the ceilings if it was uh, uh, tiled. Anyway, I was saying, uh, before I had to mute you for a sec, I was saying with Mary Jane Kelly, it was a bit harder to find a location to, to tell you about her life story because, um, well, we don't know a great lot about, uh, about uh, where she grew up and we don't even think uh, Mary Jane was her real name. Uh, she probably completely reinvented herself and um, uh, so, I'll tell you what we know, um, whether that's true or not, we don't know, she could have made it up. Most of what we know about her early life, we know it from her boyfriend, Joseph Barnett. And a few, uh, a few witnesses as well, um, uh, uh, that, uh, irony, uh, that, um, that would have uh, 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 solicited or worked with her here in the in the docks so that's why we're here today you probably will have to wait until the middle of her story to uh, to understand why uh, why exactly we're here but, um, so uh, Mary Kelly we think she might have been born in, in Ireland in Limerick at least that's what she told Barnett and um, uh, then, uh, at some point, the family is said to have moved to, uh, to Wales. We don't know if that's true. Uh, according to some, she had given slightly different version of her story to different people. 
according to some, she might have been Welsh. Um, one witness even said that she spoke Welsh. But, you know, an uneducated, drunken sex worker from Whitechapel might have not been able to recognize Welsh. They might have actually been confused with Gaelic. Who knows? Um, so her dad apparently, according to what she told uh, her boyfriend, her dad worked in a, an iron work. And um, as, she, uh, as she was in Wales, um, she, uh, she married uh, at the age of 16, or at least that's what she said. She married a Davis or Davy, we're not quite sure. Um, none of that have been, um, uh, none of that uh, uh, have been proven. It said she came up from, yes, she would have uh, potentially lived in Cardiff. Um, it's, it is interesting though, we, we just don't know, um, we just don't know if any, if any of that uh, was, uh, was true. Um, what we do know is that she came to London uh, in, in probably 1882 or 1883. According to some, uh, she even told them that she had had a son uh, or a kid um, in, uh, in, in Wales and she spent a long time in what she called an infirmary. Uh, she didn't say why and it might, it might have been some kind of a, an institution or an asylum if, because we have some reason to believe that she might actually have been um, fairly well uh, educated, so she might actually have been middle class. You know, it's easy to lie about many things, but it's actually quite hard to lie about your level of education. And uh, uh, according to some, she, she probably was well educated, she was quite good at the art, and just to be trained in the, in the art, that's something that was very uh, uh, middle class. By the way, I forgot to, to say, but before we started, I wanted to give a little a bit of, uh, of credit to Hallie Rubenthal. Uh, she's the lady that wrote The Five. She's done an amazing amount of research on the, uh, on the, the victims. Not that she was the first one. Uh, Ripologists have been studying those victims for a while, but Hallie Rubenthal really uh, put everything back into context. And, um, and a lot of the information I, I, I'm going to tell you today, I actually got it from her book. So I just wanted to give her a bit of, um, a bit of credit. Um, so yeah, when... Uh, uh, if indeed, um, if indeed uh, Mary Jane was middle class and if she had fallen pregnant uh, as, a, as a teenager, then she might have been put in some kind of an asylum. Uh, because at the time, I know it's, it's, oh, it's ridiculous, but at the time some, they sometimes believe that female sex, sexual desire outside of uh, wedlocks was insanity. So she might have been taken to some kind of establishment because uh, for them that, you know, for them that was crazy. We don't know. We don't know if, they, if there's any truth behind any of that. There probably is some part of truth because she's told some similar stories to, to Joseph Barnett and to some of the ladies she worked for as a, uh, as a prostitute around here in the docks. But although she said similar stuff, she didn't say exactly quite the same thing. So, before she got to London, really, we don't know anything. And you know, researching a Mary Kelly in Ireland, it's like researching a John Smith in, uh, in England. Um, someone wanted to be on camera here, but I was actually filming the other side, so too bad. Um, and um, so yeah, the, uh, the, we, just, we just don't know much. What, what we do know is that when she came here, she went uh, pretty much straight to work as a, as a luxurious prostitute in the West End. So um, in the 1880s, um, it was not as easy to find a sex worker in London as it would have been, you know, in the, in the 1700s, you could go to, to, to Covent Garden, you had those, all those coffee houses and those, uh, those uh, Brussels over the, the, the coffee house. Um, in, at the beginning of the 1800s, you could still go to the Argyle Room or any theatres and you'd, fam, you'd find a lot of ladies of the night in there. But in, uh, in, the, in the 1880s, it was a little bit more discreet. 
um, you'd, uh, you'd have to be much more careful. Um, and those luxurious prostitutes like, like, um, like Mary, you'd, um, you'd take them on a, on a night out, you'd take them on a date. Um, it was not only, uh, only, on, only sex. Um, and uh, uh, she worked for a madame, a French madame, somewhere around uh, Knightbridge. And um, that, that madame was also doing you, you promo, you know, she'd be giving little cards to potential customers. And often they had some very regular customers because in terms of uh, venereal disease and exposure, it was actually much better to see the same um, lady of the night all the time. And um, this is St. Catherine's docks, by the way. So this used to be a very busy dock and nowadays it's very fancy flats. And before to, to get back to, to Mary Kelly, let me show you this interesting building here. This is known as Hi Ivory House. This was a warehouse where they stored, you've guessed it, ivory. Um, sadly, the, the, the UK was a, a major uh, um, importer of, of ivory. And let me show you what they had in the building at the time. So from the 1850s, this uh, warehouse was full of, of parts of dead elephants. To give you an idea, about 200 tons a year. So we're talking 4,000 um, dead elephants. Um, the ivory was used, well, some of them was exported then to India, the little tusk, to make, for example, game pieces. Um, some bigger parts were, were sent to France or, or Germany, where they used to do uh, crucifix or stuff like that. And some would stay here in London, mainly around Camden Town, to produce uh, piano keys, because they used to produce a lot of pianos in, um, in, in London. Today, the building is very fancy flat, about 3.5 million to buy one. Let me show you there, two on the rent rental market. This one is uh, 750 a week. And uh, it's a weird shape, you know, because it's, it's it, well, it used to be a warehouse. And this one, nearly 10k a, a month, woohoo. So very, um, very big uh, contrast. Oh, yes, it's still a problem. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, uh, very big contrast with um, what it used to be. And uh, um, Kurt, I don't even know who, who David Suchet is. <laughs> what did he play? I don't know him. Um, so the, um, the, yeah, to get back to, to, to Mary Kelly, um, when she worked in the, uh, in, in the stand, it doesn't mean that she was not on the streets. So she, she, she had some fancy customers, but she probably had to go, uh, to go soliciting as well. Um, but they, they'll have to be careful because the, the prostitutes, they, um, they could not loiter. So they had to keep moving. And, uh, and they had to be careful that the customer, oh, Hercule Poirot, okay. Uh, they had to be careful that the customer was, uh, was not a police officer, of course. And apparently, even for the customers, it was a bit harder to, you know, to know who was virtuous or who was not, because, um, of course, respectable ladies were not out at night. But you had a lot of the ladies working in the shops that would have been be finishing their shifts and, and going home. You could have a few of the servants going to, to, to buy something for their, for their, 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 their masters. So, um, you know, often those ladies would be around Piccadilly pretending to look at shops and stuff, uh, waiting for customers. And um, uh, Mary Jane was always well dressed. And, and you know, to have this type of, of clientele, you probably needed to be fairly well educated anyway, because you had to, you know, go out with them and entertain a, a, a conversation. And we are not sure what happened there. She did state to her boyfriend much later on that she went to Paris and she did not like the part. What we can assume is that she might have been trafficked. Um, sadly, there were a lot of traffic between France and, and, and England, uh, 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 sex traffic. Um, some of you might have been with me. We talked about the case of Adeline Tanner when we were in uh, Ladywell on, on Brookless Cemetery. Uh, Adeline Tanner is probably the most well-known of those victims. Uh, she was a young girl of 17 years old. Uh, she had been approached. She had just left her, her job in, um, or been sacked, we don't know, uh, in service. 
and um, and uh, uh, she um, uh, look at the name of the boat. Even when Leonie is not here, she's hunting my tools. And uh, so yeah, Ad Adeline was um, she was a, 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 on a bad day, and she met uh, in the, um, next to Trafalgar Square. Uh, a, a French guy, Celis, uh, and he introduced her to Edouard Roger. They went to the pub, they gave her a lot of drinks. And uh, then Edouard Roger, that was very rich, he invited her uh, to Paris. He, he told her he would, if she, if she liked her place, he would marry her. So the drunken young girl said yes. She was taken to Victoria, she was given more alcohol in the morning, she was given fake papers and taken to, not to Paris, but to Brussels. In, uh, uh, to a brothel in Belgium. She was rescued, so that's how we know a lot about her. And we can imagine that something quite similar might have happened to Mary Kelly. Some of those victims of, of sex trafficking were already in the sex trade. So did Mary get a marriage proposal or did she just get a, 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 a proposal of work in Paris in a, in a fancy brothel? What you'd have to know is that in, in the Parisian uh, prostitution, they were a bit of, um, well, some of those courtesans, those high-end uh, uh, sex workers, were almost like superstars, um, you know, famous, really. Some of you might remember the case of um, uh, Marguerite Alibert. We talked about her in uh, my Covent Garden tour. She was the mistress of uh, Edward VIII. Well, she was one of those very famous high-end uh, prostitutes. So maybe they made... Um, they made Mary dream about that, and maybe that's why she accepted to go to Paris. See, in the middle, nothing to do with Mary, but straight ahead in the middle, there used to be a bridge there. Luckily, I always walk my routes before the tour, because I was going to take you there to go towards the Dickens Inn. And I walked, I walked there, and there was no bridge anymore. They've removed it for maintenance. They've literally, it's a little, I think it was a little drawbridge, but they've literally taken it away for, for maintenance. So luckily, I walked my route, otherwise I would have been a bit surprised. Anyway, so Mary went to Paris, probably trafficked. Again, we, again, we don't know that for sure, but... Um, what we do know is that at the time they used to, if you had a lot of luggage, the, the luggage would not travel with you. They'll send your trunk or your, uh, your, your cases on a, uh, separately. And when she got there, she was waiting for her big trunk with all her lovely uh, dresses and, um, and uh, 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 her fancy clothes. Uh, or madame, the French madame, was meant to send it to her. That did not arrive. So that's probably how she realized that she had been deceived. And um, what they used to do with those girls is that they used to give them fake papers and then they would tell them, you've used fake papers, if you escape, you'll be in trouble with the police. And they'll give them fancy items of clothing, um, so they, they, they convinced them that they were in debt anyway. Um, and uh, that probably worked for a lot of the young girls. But Mary, she could have spoken French because, as I told you, she might have been educated. And if that's the case, that's probably how she managed to escape. Um, at the time in France, you had what they called la police des mœurs, which was basically the vice uh, squad. Um, and they had to release any English girl that were found, even if they were in debt. Uh, so if that's what happened, again, again, it's just speculations. We do not know if that's what happened. But then she might have made some very dangerous enemies there because she might have put those pimps in trouble with the police des mœurs in Paris. We don't know whether that happened for sure, but she very quickly came back to London. But she did not come back to the East End. She ended up here on the Ratcliffe Highway. Now, the Ratcliffe, Ratcliffe Highway... And it's a street that goes from here, from St. Catherine's Dock to Limehouse. And it had a terrible reputation, absolutely terrible reputation, mainly because of what happened in 1810. Uh, shocking uh, murder, seven people killed. And um, it really shaped the, the reputation of, of the Radcliffe Highway. So you, I mean, it's almost impossible that Mary ever uh, dreamt of coming here, you know, she probably would have never imagined that her life would ever take her on the Radcliffe Highway, but she was probably hiding from, from, from people. 
Let me tell you very quickly about those murders in case, in case you don't know. So in 80, 1811, we are before the, the police and the Metropolitan Police was created in 1829. And one night on the Ratliff Highway, it was a very busy area. The, 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 this area would be alive 24-7 because they didn't quite know at what time a ship was going to arrive. Um, so there were some businesses and shops open pretty much all night. And there were a lot of drunken sailors and dockers and, you know. And um, there was a shop that belonged to the, the Mar family. Um, they, they wanted a midnight, midnight snack. They basically sent their servant to buy oysters. At the time, oysters were quite um, uh, cheap. Uh, it was not fancy like today. And you had some establishment that sold oysters very late at night. So the young servant went out. She comes back a little while later. She couldn't find any, uh, any oysters. And she's knocking at the door. They're not opening for her. So she's like knocking and screaming and making a bit of a mess but because they were expecting her you know they were expecting dinner and then one of the night watch so the night watches they were those those guys checking the streets before uh, before the police was actually created often they were older gentlemen and they were not very much uh, suited for, for for the job really and the night watch is like what's what's happening you know what's wrong here why are you making such big noise and uh, she's like, I'm the servant, they're expecting me, they're, they're, they're not here, something has happened. And the night watch kind of doubted it, he was like, yeah, right. They're like, no, you don't get it, something, something's wrong, they're, they're expecting me. And the night watch went to the back of the building, when he managed to get in, he didn't turn any candles or any light on, because he was convinced the family was asleep. And he, his foot went in something very wet. So then he, light, uh, he, he, he put a bit of light on and that's how he found the gruesome discovery. The couple, their 10 months old baby and uh, the boy working at the shop, they, they had all been killed. And no, no reason why, we, no, nobody knew. Uh, so horrible, horrible quadruple murder. And um, obviously everyone was in shock. Um, and uh, uh, there were some people that were suspected, but uh, at the time they were not great at, at gathering evidence or anything. And just a, a couple of weeks later, there was a pub down the road where in the, in the, in the middle of the night, there's a, a gentleman coming out half naked out of his window. He had managed to, to, to uh, attach some bed sheet to, to escape from the window and he was screaming, murder, murder. Uh, yeah, and he had, been, he had seen a gentleman inside killing Elizabeth, uh, a girl that lived with him. And again, the murderer ran away and three people died, the, the Williamsons. The, the area was in panic mode, they wanted a guilty party. There was a young man that was arrested because he had had a quarrel with the Marr family. And he was, he was sadly put into prison and um, he, uh, uh, he, he committed suicide in, uh, in, in prison. Uh, his name was uh, John Williams. Was he guilty? Was he not? That's the big question. Probably not. We don't even know if he actually took his own life or if the authorities might have hanged him. Because if, if he was, you know, if they found him not guilty, that would have been a big problem. If he, if he took his own life, then, you know, he was guilty. And the, the public was outraged because they wanted him to have been, you know, to have had uh, to have been executed, you know. So they wanted to see his body. So his body was uh, exposed on a cart on the Ratliff Highway. And, and, and as they were on the street, they, they, they put a, a stake through his heart so he wouldn't come back from the dead. Um, so, yeah, that's what shaped the reputation of the Ratliff Highway. And that's also what led to better collecting of evidence and stuff. Um, the police did get involved, but that was not the Metropolitan Police then. It was the Marine Police. Because we had some police on the Thames River way before the Metropolitan Police. Because we had a lot of crimes on the river, you know, a lot of pirates. And around here you had a lot of um, stolen goods, you know, piracy, uh, uh, stealing those... Um, those uh, um, yeah, they had buried him at a cross, uh, crossroad uh, just around here, yeah. Anyway, so that was just a little, uh, 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 a little story to tell you about the, 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 the horrible reputation of, um, of this area. So when, uh, when Mary moved here, 
It's probably at this point, by the way, that she took the name Mary Kelly. Because if she was running away from some dangerous people, if those guys were looking for a Welsh girl, as she might have told them, you know, then it's easier to become Irish and, and you know, that's such a classic name. Um, as far as we know, she did not have any regional accent. So, um, so you know, uh, uh, she could have been from anywhere, really. And uh, she knocked at the door of a brussel here, the brussel of Madame Bocou. Uh, Mrs. Bocou was... Um, uh, she's not French, by the way, she's, uh, she's Dutch. Uh, Miss, Mrs. Bocou was uh, uh, um, managing a brothel here in a former pub. And uh, young Mary was 22 at that point, very beautiful, so exactly what uh, the sailors want. The, the, the job as a sex worker that she would have done here would have been very different from the one in the East End. Uh, here, the ladies of the night would just run to the docks when a ship was approaching. Because those sailors, you know, they, they were at sea for a while, so whenever they came back to, uh, to London, uh, they wanted girls, you know. And with the sailors, it was a bit the same. They'll stay, uh, well, they wouldn't stay with them for weeks, but at least for a few days, or until, until their wallets were emptied, maybe. Because again, it was better to stay with the same girl for three, four nights, rather than picking up a new girl every night in terms of venereal disease, you know, those seamen, them, I said seamen. I always try not to say seamen because, uh, because uh, the, those sailors, uh, because I don't know how to say the difference between seamen and seamen, uh, you know, the, 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 the men of the sea and the, the white liquid. <laughs> when I, um, I, I took a job at the Cutty Sark as a guide through the, at the end of the, 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 the lockdowns, and on my script they said seamen all the time, and I was like, no, 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 I cannot say that. So I, I prefer to say sailors. So those sailors, of course, they were, um, everyone in London was quite um, uh, exposed to, uh, to venereal disease. Um, we're talking about 20% of the population at the time that suffered from, from syphilis. So um, uh, those, uh, th those sailors were safer staying with the same girl for a few nights. And if Mary was not an alcoholic quite yet, she probably, probably got a bit more fond of the bottle by that point. Um, you know, when you have to have sex with a, a dirty, drunken uh, sailor, you know, um, and, and those guys could have, I mean, you know, drunk people can be violent. So, uh, you know, with the fear of venereal disease, with the fear of, of falling pregnant, with the fear of violence, uh, everything is a bit better with a, a few drinks, you know. Um, so, and at that point, she's actually described as, as, as being quite quarrel, quarrelsome after a few drinks. And that's why it did not finish very well with Mrs. Bocou. And she actually moved to a different brothel a bit, a bit further down the street. Um, the second brothel, the lady was called Miss Phoenix. Um, Felix, but sometimes they, they spelled it Phoenix. Uh, that's a mistake. Uh, Mrs. Felix was... Um, well, the second brothel was even worse. They used to get the sailors drunk and then steal from their belongings. Um, we don't know whether Mary took part or, or, or in that, but yeah, probably. And um, according, to, according to Mrs. Felix, when Mary was with Mrs. Bocou, Mrs. Bocou convinced Mary to go with, with her back to the East End, back to our old uh, uh, brothel to, to reclaim the dresses that the, the French madame had stolen from her, that she never sent to France. Uh, that did not appear to have been successful. But what we do know, again, according to Mrs. Felix, after that event, when Mary went back to her old life to ask for her dresses, a man came here. A man came around the Ratcliffe Highway asking for Mary, pretending to be her father. Apparently, Mary managed to avoid him. Um, it, it's very unlikely that he was actually her father. We don't know. He could have been. Um, we, just, we just don't know. But the very fact that she tries very hard to avoid him, he might have been, he might have been a dangerous man looking for her. Maybe, well, maybe one of those that she would have been maybe one of those sex traffickers that uh, she would have put in trouble with the police in France or, you know, we just don't know. We can, uh, 
we can only speculate. And uh, uh, that's when she met uh, a boyfriend, uh, Joseph, not Barnett quite yet, Joseph Fleming. And she left, uh, she left her, her job in, uh, in the Radcliffe Highway to go and move with him. According to quite a few witnesses, she was very fond of him. But one day she came back knocking at the door of Mrs. Felix with a customer and Mrs. Felix was like, what are you doing here, girl? You got a boyfriend? And, and she said, no, it's, uh, it's over. Apparently it was a little uh, violent with her. Um, so she came back into prostitution and that's when she moved, she moved to, uh, to, to, to Spitafield. Um, she ended up in a lodging house there and she ended up uh, soliciting on, uh, on, uh, on the commercial road. And it's also in this part of her life that there's a lot of speculations. Um, we do not have any records of any of, of, of those uh, events, but you know, it's not because there's no record of it that it did not happen. So I'll tell you what people have said. Um, look at the duckies. Um, but again, just remember that anything I'm going to say next, we've got no record of any of that. Some have said that uh, at that point, she ended up... Um, uh, can anybody give me a little emoji or anything in the chat? Because I've not had any reaction for a while, so I'm starting to get worried about the signal. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, at that point, um, some said that she might have ended up at the Providence Row night shelter. You might have seen... Perfect. Thank you, Kurt. Uh, you might have seen that place in my Jack the Ripper tour. Usually, I use that place to tell you a bit more about the workhouses. It was not a workhouse. It was a night shelter that was a, a Catholic institution that was managed by nuns. And it was for the deserving poor. You know, those Victorians, they liked to, um, they, they liked to, 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 to judge the poor in deserving or undeserving. And some say that Mary Jane Kelly spent a, a bit of time in there. It is very possible, but that's not recorded. And some say that those nuns, they got her a job in Cleveland Street in Soho. We're talking about a year before the Cleveland Street uh, scandal. Uh, for the ones that don't know, that was a scandal, basically a gay brussel, uh, where we believe the authorities might have tried to hit, uh, cover up a bit because some very important people uh, were caught in there, including Prince Eddie. His real name was Prince Vilt Victor Albert and he was the, the, the Prince of Wales at the time. He was the, um, the, the heir to the throne. Um, no, he wasn't Prince of Wales yet. I think his dad was still, but, but he was the, uh, the grandson of, the, uh, of, of Queen Victoria. And uh, so if he had lived a bit longer, he actually died in a weird epidemic. It was a flu, but it was a flu that only affected adults. Children would not get it. That might ring a bell. So they had, uh, they had uh, 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 a flu a bit like our COVID at the time. And, uh, and he passed away, so he never became king eventually. But that's what led, led to... Um, to uh, uh, the, the, the royal conspiracy. Some of you might have seen the movie From Hell with, uh, with Johnny Depp. In, in any of the movies, Mary Jane Kelly is always played by the, 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 the sexiest actress. Many people believe that Mary Jane holds the keys, um, that Mary Jane was the, the actual target, that the other four, if you agree that it's four, some say it might be three, some say, that the other one were were just either mistargeted or used as an excuse, or, you know. Um, so yeah, that's uh, if you've heard the royal conspiracy. That uh, um, it's actually a conspiracy that came up with Stephen Knight uh, when he published a book in the in the seventies. Uh, there's absolutely no evidence behind any of that, but they basically believe that um, the, the 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 prince uh, had had a, a, a secret marriage with a. a a, a girl from the East End, and um, exactly the final, the final solution, Kurt, and um, that uh, uh, 
Mary Kelly was aware of that royal baby and that they were blackmailing the, um, the, uh, the, the royal family. Yeah, she's always the pretty one in the movies because she was much, much younger. The, the other victims were in their late, uh, their late uh, 40s when Mary was described as being very pretty indeed. And um, so that's, uh, yeah, that's what led to a lot of uh, uh, crazy conspiracy. And, and people, have been, people have been struggling for years. They want, to, they want to know who she was. To give you an idea, about uh, eight years ago now, we had, some, uh, we had a bit of hope to find our real identity. There's a, a, a doctor called Wayne Weston Davis. He was convinced that Mary was his great aunt. Uh, great aunt? Yeah, great aunt. Um, a, 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 a lady from Wales that, well, Davis, you might remember the name. Uh, uh, she, did, she did tell, she did tell uh, uh, Barnett that she had married a Davis. And she, uh, she had also mentioned a brother that was called Jonto. And that lady, Elizabeth Weston Davis, um, did work as a prostitute. She did come down to London and she, she married a journalist and very quickly they, they went through a divorce because she went back soliciting. And that uh, Wayne Weston Davis, he published a book eight years ago and he was convinced that, that uh, Mary Kelly was actually Elizabeth, his great aunt. And to be fair, he, he built a, 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 a quite a good case, very little evidence, but uh, quite a few coincidences really. Um, and he wanted to have Mary exhumed. Mary was buried in a Catholic cemetery uh, St. Patrick's, because she had said she was Irish. She probably was not a Catholic at all. Uh, we just don't know who she was. We have no idea. Um, and uh, uh, we are now at the tobacco docks, by the way. And uh, so, yeah, he, he built a very good case and, and a lot of the repologists uh, looked into it as well. But it came up very recently, about two years ago, that they were actually able to to, to, to locate um, Elizabeth Weston Davis' grave in, in, in Wales. So she went back to Wales, so she cannot be Kelly because she died in 1929. Um, so that was a bit of a disappointment. Um, and uh, and the, the, in that theory, the guy believed it was, uh, he, he, she was his aunt. Um, then the murderer would have been a journalist that, was, uh, that married, married uh, uh, Elizabeth but then div divorced her, and because he wanted to kill her, he would have killed another four prostitutes to just give himself a, a, an excuse, you know, and, and, and that's why he would have written uh, letters to the press, because obviously he was a journalist, so he knew where to write them. And I mean, the case was, it, it was a very, uh, very good case, to be fair, you know. Um, so yeah, you, we're still searching. We still do not know the identity of the real Mary Kelly. Uh, was she Welsh? Was she, was she um, Irish? We don't know. So those ships, they're actually replicas. They've been built in the 90s, I believe, because the tobacco docks, so as you might have guessed from the, na the name, they used to store tobacco here. Uh, tab tobacco had to be stored for a while because it had to be cured. Uh, so it had, to, um, it had to be stored for, for a while. Um, and in the, in the 90s, they kind of wanted to make it a, a shopping center, like the new, uh, the new Covent Garden, really. That didn't really work. Um, it's still a cool place today, but it's not a shopping center. Nowadays, it's used as a um, uh, festival hall, uh, exhibitions. I actually worked here at the Tobacco Dock once at the Craft Beer Festival. That was a good job. I was giving free beer and I could have as much free beer as I want myself. So everyone loves you when you give free beer and it's quite a good shift when you can get drunk. So that was, that was fun. But yeah, it's, um, it's a cool place. Let me give you a bit of a view from here. Um, oops, focus, camera, focus. No, it doesn't want to focus. Let's see, like this. Oops. And now you focus, there we go. So yeah, it's quite, um, quite cool. Anyway, back, uh, back to Kelly. So we've got that little um, period of her life that's quite mysterious, but not, not that much, you know. She was uh, 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 an unfortunate in, uh, in Spitalfield. And that's when she met um, 
she met Barnett. So she was in a relationship with Joseph Barnett for the last 18 months of her life. And most of the facts I've told you now, they actually come from Barnett. Some of them are corroborated, co co how do we say? Corroborated. Co corbor Corbor oh, whatever. Some of them are, are being confirmed by, uh, by the, 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 ladies, uh, the, the ladies that um, had hired uh, uh, Mary. And uh, then she got into a relationship with, um, with, um, with Barnett and he said to her he was going to take care of her. She did not need to solicit. We believe he was a customer huh, when they met, although he never admitted it. It's pretty obvious that, that he was. And uh, Barnett worked as, um, as, as a porter on the... Uh, that's the one, Kurt, thank you. Uh, uh, at uh, at the, the fish market. And he, uh, he lost his job. He was very fond of the bottle himself. The two of them were... They moved into four different locations in Spitalfield. And they kept being, being evicted because they couldn't pay the rent and they were, uh, they were always, always drunk. Um, and uh, um, he, uh, uh, he, he then eventually, well, they took the lease on uh, number 13 Miller's Court in, uh, in Dorset Street, but she took the lease under her name. Um, the, the landlord was probably well aware that a young, uh, beautiful sex worker was always going to be able to bring some money, right? And eventually, when the, the time of the, the murders of the Ripper started, um, it is said apparently Barnett used to read the news to her every day. Like if she couldn't read, uh, we've got some reason to believe she could read. And she was receiving some letters from Ireland. We don't know who. Family? Friend? Maybe a former lover that she might have had when she used to work in, the, uh, 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 in Knightbridge because she might have had a lot of military in, uh, in, in her customers. Uh, so we don't know. But eventually, she kind of pushed Barnett away because he could not... She had to go back selling her body because he could not supply for her. And she kept inviting some friends over, um, ladies of the night as well, because she didn't want to see them killed on the street. So she kept inviting them into her bed and, and Barnett left. That very night, 9 of November, uh, 1888, Barnett had gone to see, uh, to see Mary, uh, but he said, I'm sorry, I don't, ha I don't have any money. And, uh, then she was, uh, she was seen on the street. Uh, she was described as, uh, as being a bit drunk. Uh, she went to the Ten Bells. She used to, um, you might have seen the Ten Bells pub in my, uh, in my Jack the Ripper tour. And uh, um, I might actually put the tour in the link if any, of you, if any of you have missed it, I might put it in the description. But um, he, um, uh, she was seen going in with a customer and one of uh, her neighbors, Mary Jane Cox, she spotted Kelly coming in very drunk and she said to her, I'm going to have a little song. So she went in with that customer into her tiny little flat and she started singing. And uh, we know exactly what she sang because she was singing nonstop over and over again. And uh, it's a song called A Violet I Plucked from Mother's Grave. It goes, Sins of my childhood arise before my gaze, bringing such recollection of bygone happy days. When down in the meadow of childhood I would roam, no one's left to cheer me now within that good old home. Father and mother, they have passed away. Sister and brother, no lay beneath the clay but while those while life does remain in memoriam i'll retain this small violet i plucked from mother's grave sorry you had to hear my voice because obviously copyright i cannot play it on youtube um and that customer by the way was not the ripper because, well, according to some, Mary went out again and uh, uh, she, uh, well, according to one customer, she went out again and, uh, and came back with, uh, with another man. We never know what, um, what witnesses you can, uh, you can trust, you know, but um, 
And then the rest of the story, we know it that night. Well, we think it might have been that night. We don't even know that for sure. But probably in the middle of the night, she was brutally, brutally attacked. You might have seen some of the photographs on, on the internet. I'm not showing you in my tools because I don't, um, you know, if, if I was going to be murdered myself, I wouldn't want photos of my naked, disabled body to be exposed to virtual voyagers on YouTube 132 years later. But um, yeah, brutal murder. Officially, it happened through that night. But even that is debatable because what happened is about 11 a.m. the landlord came to collect the rent. She was 29 shilling late in the rent. And uh, um, he, uh, he, she, didn't, she didn't open the door. So he, he, he opened the door through the window because the window had been broken. Uh, one night, uh, um, uh, Mary and Barnett were having an argument and she, she, she broke the window. Um, and then he, he found the gruesome discovery. But that was 11 a.m. And would you believe about, uh, about well, there, there are two witnesses, but one very serious that had seen Mary about 30, 37 a.m. on the street. She spoke to her in the morning. And according to the doctors, she was already dead four hours earlier. Um, could it have been Mary? We don't know. That's what led some to believe that Mary could have even faked her own death. She used to invite some girls over, you know. Um, maybe she, you know, who knows. Um, maybe she didn't fake it, but maybe she was on the street and then she heard she was dead. And because people were looking for her, she was in such a dangerous position. Maybe she used it to run away. Maybe she said, oh, they think I'm dead. Perfect timing. Um, we, we don't know. She's the most mysterious of all the, um, uh, of all the, 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 the victims. And by the way, I stopped here. I'm not going to stay here because I can hear some music again. But that would have been the site of um, uh, 79 uh, Pennington Street. So that's where Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Boku had uh, uh, the Brussels in which, uh, in which Mary, um, Mary worked. So yeah, and you know, that very, that very morning at 11 a.m., suddenly her story was not her own anymore. Suddenly you had hundreds of thousands of people trying to tell her story, including myself, when really we don't know anything. We don't know who that girl was. We do not know if she was the one found in the bed because her, her face was ravaged. Apparently, Barnett identified her with the ear and the eyes. The eyes were... Uh, uh, but Barnett could have been an accomplice. Barnett is even a suspect anyway, so we have to rely on Barnett for so much. So really, we don't know anything. And we've got, you know, thousands of ripologists, uh, and we've, you know, we've... That's why it's such a fascinating case, because was she the actual target? Was she just the last? Um, was she called Mary? Was she called Elizabeth? Was, we just don't know. Uh, and that's, uh, that's what made that, that case uh, so, uh, so interesting. Anyway, it's going to be the end of the tour. So do let me know in the chat if you have any questions for me. And I'm going to get a bit further away from the music because I think there's, a, there's some kind of a rave party inside. I don't know what it is, but I can hear um, electro music. And uh, thank you very much for, uh, for coming today. And uh, um, do let me know if you have any questions. If, um, if, you, uh, uh, if you want to see a bit more of me, on Sunday, I've not scheduled it yet, but I think on Sunday I'll take you to, uh, to Marie Le Bon uh, because uh, on the Monopoly I ended up in Marie Le Bon station. So um, that's going to be next weekend at some point. I'll schedule it soon. Thanks, Margaret. Thanks, Sandrine. And uh, if you guys uh, uh, don't follow me yet, if you, uh, if you enjoyed that tour today, you might want to give me a little subscribe just to make sure you don't miss out on the fun next time. Yeah, next weekend, Linda. I've not scheduled it yet, but it's going to be next weekend at some point.
Thanks, Kurt. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Ronilyn. Thanks, everyone, for coming. If any of you gave me a little tip on, uh, on buy me a coffee or on PayPal, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I don't see them live, but uh, you're very much uh, appreciated. Um, we still completely rely on, on your generosity. And, um, and uh, I think that's all I have to say. Oh, thank you, Linda. And of course, if you, uh, if you guys are watching this on replay, um, if, you, uh, if you have any theories on your, of your own, if you think Mary was uh, so-and-so, if you think she was the target, do, uh, do let me know in the comments. I always like to, uh, to, uh, 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 to keep on the, the debate. So yeah, do, uh, do let me know. And uh, if not, have a good evening, a good morning, whatever time it is for you, wherever you are in the world. And, uh, and I'll, uh, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.